Welcome to Baxter Bell Yoga. I'm here at the Oakland Yoga Studio today. Please come check out the studio the next time you're in Oakland, California. And don't forget, you can now order my book, Yoga for Healthy Aging, co-written with Nina Zolotov from my website, baxterbell.com, as well as finding the link to order t-shirts. If you decide to order a t-shirt, order up a couple sizes, they tend to run a little bit small. So today's uh, one of our yoga and anatomy lessons. I'm very excited to come back to that topic today. And I thought today we would take a look at the very base of the spine and the uh, bones that make up that area. We've got our model here, and of course this is the pelvic region that I'm interested in sharing with you today. So a little bit of introduction to the pelvic area. You can see from uh, our model that the spine rests on the top of what's known as the sacrum bone. And the sacrum bone in the center is connected to the pelvic bones on the right and left side. I have another model of that here so you can take a look at that. So from the front, you can see that the pelvic bones wing out, the pubic bones in front, and the sacrum bone sits between the two uh, uh, wings of the, of the pelvic bones. If we actually take a look from the top, you can see that there's a big space that heads towards the bottom of the body. If we swing it around the other way, of course, you can see the exit from the pelvis. And of course, that's important in the female pelvis when it comes to childbirth and delivery of the baby in a healthy way. I want to mention that at the front, where the two sides of the pelvic bones come together at the pubic ramus, there's actually a little piece of cartilage between those bones, and there's actually ligaments surrounding that area or a movable joint. And the same thing is true in the back between the sacrum bone and the right and left wings of the pelvis, or the ilium of the pelvis. And where the sacrum meets the ilium, we call that the uh, sacroiliac joint. And sometimes it's very strong and stable, and sometimes it can be a little bit loose. When it gets loose, it can sometimes cause some pain and difficulty. This is also a synovial joint with ligaments on the front, the back, and a joint capsule and some fluid inside that joint. However, it usually doesn't move very much. The only exception of that is during childbirth, in which there's a little bit of more movement there to allow the baby's head to enter the top of the pelvis and eventually come out of the bottom of the pelvis. A couple other good landmarks to know about are the depressions on the right and left side of the pelvis. This is known as the acetabulum, and that's, of course, where the femur bone, the upper leg bone, meets the pelvic bone. And of course, if we're walking around in that area, the pelvis will be moving and the legs will be moving. And if we stop moving the legs, but we tip forward to take a forward bend or go back a little bit, the pelvis will rock forward and back at that hip joint where the head of the femur bone meets the depression inside the pelvic bone. Okay, so that's kind of a nice spot to know about. Um, in addition, the sitting bones, which are at the very bottom, the little curved uh, parts of the pelvis, are the parts that I'm actually sitting on right now and you might be sitting on as you listen to me give you this little talk. And so that's a good landmark to be aware of. In general, the pelvis is a pretty stable area and that's good because it's bearing the weight of our upper body on top of it. And again, as we're walking around, of course, there'll be a little bit of three-dimensional movement on the hip, uh, hip the leg, uh, leg bones, the femur bones. And of course, the spine will stay relatively steady as the pelvis makes little teeny adjustments to allow for our gait to move forward and back. So I think that's a pretty good overview of the pelvis with the pelvic bones right and left and the sacrum bone in the middle, pubic bone in the front, sitting bones in the bottom, a little bit about the acetabulum and the hip joint. For today, we'll leave it there. We may come back and visit the pelvis at a future date, but just to give you a little sense of where it's located, kind of how it uh, plays a role in movement. And of course, we haven't even talked about the muscles that surround that area, so that will be a topic for a future conversation. Uh, don't forget uh, that you can follow me online at baxterbell.com and on the blog site Yoga for Healthy Aging. I also have longer yoga practices on the practice channel at the website yogauonline.com. Until the next time, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Namaste.